So let's be on the channels palette are the actions palette. This is where T-seps is involved. Let's open up one more palette called the layers palette. Now, Photoshop is used to build designs using what's called layers. Now, when you run T-seps, your file can have no layers. But think of layers as being objects in CorelDRAW or Illustrator. This design has no layers. This is the way it should look when we're done separating or done building it and ready to separate it. This is what a file would look like that was built in layers in Photoshop. And this file started off simply as a scan out of a newspaper or a magazine. I'm not sure where the artist got this, but this is obviously a photograph. Now, when you're working in layers in Photoshop, and I'm in layers, and don't confuse layers with channels. Channels is the file mode. RGB, CMYK, index, which is little square pixels. Layers are the various components. Again, think of layers as being like objects in Illustrator or Corel Draw. And you can actually select a layer and work on just that layer, select a layer and work on that layer. And in the layers palette and the channels palette, the little eye, little box here that's called the preview. And it shows you the visibility, meaning if there's an eye here, then I can see what's on that layer. If there's an eye here, I can see what's on that layer. If there's an eye, I can see it. One area of confusion when people first start building in layers in Photoshop is they're selected working on a layer, but they're looking at a different layer. And they wonder why they can't change it. They have the eye in it, but they can't do anything to the word motorcycles. You have to be selected and have the eye on. Now, with every layer, and these are graphic elements that could have come from a text program. This, this word motorcycle could have been uh, done in Photoshop and kind of junked up in Photoshop. But when you're on a layer and you're looking at the layer object, you can click on the toolbar. And then the plan of this video is to show you these tools in a real practical application. You can click on what's called the Move Tool. I'm on the Move Tool, and you can see it put... Uh, a marquee around the motorcycles and that is because I have it set to show transform controls and you really want to see your transform controls because think of this now like in Corel or Illustrator I can click and drag just like I can in Illustrator I can click and drag and make this bigger now this is a low res file I'm working on you can click and drag and by the way when you make something bigger in Photoshop on a layer You'll think you're, you're home free, and you go to click on another layer, and nothing happens. On a layer in Photoshop, when you change it or transform it, you must double-click in it to approve it. Now, because my screen is reduced here, Photoshop typically shows you a little checkbox, a little X. And when that checkbox up in the upper right, and it's not visible on my display here, when that checkbox is checked, it is, is visible, it means you have not approved your transformation. Now... Continuing on with kind of our little tutorial here, if we don't like what we've done, Photoshop has only one undo using your keyboard. I can do a control Z on the keyboard and do one undo. If you need more undos to, to revert back, you have your history palette open and you go back in history. You can go back up many times in history. So we have our layer. This came from a scan. When we see checks around a layer, or on a layer, checks around the object, it means that there's no, there's no, it's transparent. There's no background. And we can click and drag and move things around. We can look at other components here. I'm going to move this out of the way. Click on Write Them. I'm on the Move tool. Click and drag. Now, when you're on a layer, let's click on the actual background layer, Desert Sky. We're looking at right I'm looking at motorcycles. We can now use some of the tools to affect this. As an example, we can go to the tone curve again, our favorite place, and we can lighten just the background. Remember, we're only on the background layer. We can also go to the toolbar. The toolbar has a variety of tools. One of the tools you'll use quite a bit is called the Dodge Burn tool. And if I click on that tool, I get a little tiny cursor. This is the actual tip of the tool. If I right mouse click, I can make the tool brush, the tip of the tool. They call this the brush. So most of these tools have a tip size. Think of this as like a spray paint can. If we're holding a spray paint can close to the wall and writing, it's a very small, very readable uh, word. If we move back and put a very big spray on it, then it's much softer. 
We can also change the brush size by dropping down the brush menu, the top property bar. And now, because I'm on the Dodge Burn tool, if I take my mouse and move it around, this is the Dodge tool. Dodge means to lighten things. And again, I'm only dodging the background because even though I'm looking at motorcycles, looking at Ritem, I'm on the Desert Sky background. Now, every mouse click, I just unclick, click again, click again, every mouse click is recorded in history. If I don't like what I've got, I go to the history palette. You can see Dodge Tool, Dodge Tool, Dodge Tool, Dodge Tool, Move Tool. I'll go back to Layers. If I hold my Alt key down on the keyboard, Command key on the Mac, I burn it in. That's why it's called the Dodge Burn Tool. I'm burning it in. Oh, I'm burning in right item because I was selected on that. That's where I ended up. If I take this off, we'll show it to you. And again, if I go to history, I can go burn, burn, move, go to layers. Now, I can also soften the image. This image actually is fairly soft right now because it is a low res image, but I can go to the soften, blur, sharpen, and smudge tool or blur tool. Click on the blur tool. Again, I have a, a little small cursor. I can go up here to the brush and say make the cursor bigger. And let's give you a practical example. Let's go back to the took off the marching ants to the wolf. Just to show you, I'm on the blur tool and I can blur and blur and blur and clicking with the mouse and blur and blur. And I can change the strength in the upper property bar. Blur, blur, blur. Now you may think there's no practical apl application here, but the blur tool is commonly used to soften areas that are a little jaggy. Maybe it's a low res file and you'd rather have it be softer than jagged. Maybe it's part of the design that you want to fall to the background, almost like photography, where you want the wolf's head to be real sharp. Maybe you want to blur underneath here. Blur, blur, blur. Now on the same lines, I can hold the cursor down in this tool and go to the sharpen tool. And again, you have a small cursor. We'll go up here to the brush pull down. Give me a bigger tip. Now, I've blurred this quite a bit. Let's sharpen the eye. I'm just going to click, 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 and you get carried away where it gets it very grainy, too sharp. That's sharpened. And a fun tool sometimes for giving your design an edge effect is the smudge tool. Again, make the cursor bigger, and smudging is like finger painting. And you just, this is often used to give a design an edge effect. Obviously, I wouldn't do this for the wolf unless I wanted to make him kind of a stylized wolf. Zoom tool, right click, fit on screen, smudge tool. Let's just give him a uh, look like this. There we go. This is the rabbit wolf. So we've seen some of the various tools in Photoshop by doing practical applications. Let's take it one step further. I'm going to zoom in on the wolf's face. I'm going to click on the lasso tool, and I'm going to lasso around the face. And there's my marching ants. This is now a selection. I'm going to do a common computer graphic move called a copy. I can either go to the edit pull down menu and come down to copy, or I can do a control C or option C depending if I'm on a Mac or a PC. I just copied this area only because remember this is a selection. I just copied this to clipboard. Let's go back to our motorcycle design. Now these are different resolutions. The the wolf design is 200 dpi. This image is about 150 dpi, so that the size will be a slight mismatch. And it's very common when you copy things into an image, you find that they don't quite match up. But we can change the size. Let's put some of these files, some of these images back in place. I'm going to go to the little arrow right here in the layers palette. And I'll move this over because you can't see it. It drops off the screen capture program. And I'm going to click on New Layer. Now, there's other ways you can do this, but this is the kind of the step one, step two type way. Click on New Layer. I just made a new layer. And there's my layer right there. There's nothing on it. I'm going to select that layer. I'm now going to do a typical computer graphic move called a paste. I can go to the Edit pull down menu and click on Paste, or Control-V. And it says that there's a little mismatch in the profile of these two files. Don't worry about that. You'll get these errors in Photoshop. These are not errors. It's just kind of warnings, and this is more for the purists. We'll say OK. Now, if you can see it or not, but there's the wolf's head right back there. 
Now, I can't see them because the layer is like a, layers are like a stack. Just like in Corel or Illustrator, things can be put in to on top of or behind objects. And right now, this is my stack, and the wolf's face is behind the motorcycle, behind the wording. But I can click on the layer, click on not the wording layer, but click on the actual thumbnail of the wolf, and I can click and drag and drop him to the top. There's the wolf's head. Yeah, not very impressive there. Let's bring him down, back down where he was. But let's click on the Move tool. Again, click on the Move tool. I'm selected on the wolf layer. And now if I click and drag, I move the wolf's face up here. I can move him around. How about I put him right there? Now, because I have Show Transform Controls checked, I can actually see the little kind of the marquee, the selection around the wolf's face. And if you recall from earlier, I can actually click and drag and I can click on and move him around and put him right there. Now again, I must double click on him to approve the transformation. Now if I want to get a little fancier, and I'm just playing with this, I'm on the wolf layer and I can actually click on where it says layer one. And I can actually call this wolf. And typically you can see that you name your layers. I'm on the wolf layer, selected on it. I can go to opacity and I can bring the opacity way down where he's very subtle. These are kind of the fun things you do. When you see designs like this that have glows and shadows and lots going on, I guarantee you they're built in Photoshop and they're built in layers. And this is how simple it is. So you can see you can copy from one design to another images. You can select images. We could also simply, let's take the uh, marching ants off of the wolf. We can actually copy a file from a file to a file. We can actually copy a layer. Right now this is the background layer, but I could have clicked and dragged. I could click on the actual thumbnail in the wolf layer, the, the wolf file, click and drag and drop it on the other file. Again, I get, I get the mismatch for the profiles. Don't worry about this. We say OK. And now I just dropped the wolf image right there. You can see. And I can put him down behind here. I can take this wolf and not look at him. And I can click on the wolf layer, the big wolf, and move him around and put him right there. So you can see, you can actually work within files. So you always have multiple files, or you generally have multiple files open in Photoshop. And you can click and drag from layer to layer, from file to file. You can copy from file to file. And at the end of the day, you have a file that's ready to pretty much uh, print. But before you print this file, you have to do what's called flattening it. But before I flatten it, let's take it one step further. The word "ritem" I like it pretty well. I'm not sure where this came from. The artist probably freeformed this. But if I double click on the word "ritem," it brings up what's called layer style. And layer style is kind of a fun place to be. I can actually click on, click on drop shadow. And don't confuse having it checked with selecting it. Make sure you're highlighted. And look at the word "ritem" because that's the layer I'm working on. I can move the distance slider. See the shadow? I can change and make it softer, spread it. I can make it real soft. I can change the angle. I'll bring it back down. You see in lots of the things I design, there's always a shadow. And give it a soft shadow. It gives your designs more 3D. Let's bring this down and let's soften a little bit. 